Hello, this is Sound Out here, and welcome back to another episode of Sound Out's Toy Chest. This week's clue, hear the voice of Thanatos. And no, we're not reviewing Thanos from Marvel Legends or anything like that. This one's a little bit of uh, an older figure. Yeah, I decided to skew towards, let's review something that came out a few years ago as opposed to something more recent. So today we'll be taking a look at SH Figure Arts Lunatic from the SH Figure Arts Tiger and Bunny line. Now this guy was released back during the show's run, so somewhere between 2012 and 2013, I believe. I'm not exactly sure when he came out, but he is one of my favorite SH Figure Arts, and I figured this would be the perfect time to review him as I've been re-watching the series lately. So let's take a look at Lunatic. Now, Lunatic is one of the more impressive SH figure arts that I own, as it managed to take Lunatic's very thin design and add a ton of joints to it. He's got all the standard figure arts articulation, despite being this thin. It's really quite cool. Uh, they didn't bulk him up too much. He does look a little bulkier, probably around the elbows, than he did in the show, but they did a really fantastic job sculpting this figure. Now, Lunatic was an anti-hero of sorts, more so leading towards a villain, kind of a rival to the heroes of Sternbuild City, uh, as he was more keen on eliminating criminals permanently, as opposed to just arresting them. But, that is what makes this guy pretty cool, because he's different than the other heroes in the show, and the other costumed characters. Now, his mask is super creepy. First of all, it has a hand, it's a blue hand on his face, which is clear plastic on top of a blue paint, which is really cool. Plus, the mouth design's really freaky with those eyes. I also love how the, the English dub of the show cast the voice actor for Gara from Naruto as Lunatic. It was perfect casting, in my opinion. On the side, you can see the hand design again with green coming off of it. Very similar to the blue hands he has. So you get a really interesting motif going on here with the blue racing over into the gray with the white lines. I really like the way this guy looks overall. Now, the coolest thing about him is all of his articulation. First of all, he has a ball joint at the top of the neck. can get all kinds of crazy, subtle movements out of him. So he can just be really creepy. You also get a ball joint at the base of the neck as well, which is really nice. You get outward shoulders on a pin disc plus a ball joint there and the shoulder pads do move out of the way, plus a bicep swivel, a double jointed elbow that works really well, and a triple jointed wrist, which is fantastic. Now you have upper by, uh, upper, yeah, upper torso articulation, that's what I'm trying to say, and a lower waist ball joint that does come off if you pull it too hard. His legs also have the extending uh, leg design and can move forward and back, they rotate, and they do a double joint knee, plus an ankle pivot that has room for his ankle to go forward, and a toe joint, and a left and right swivel, plus it rotates. So you get a lot of great articulation possibilities out of this guy. Now, my biggest complaint with the figure by far is the only one issue I've really had with him, and that's getting these little paws to stay in. They do, they, they do come off, and it's quite a problem a lot of the time. Now, naturally, over here, you have a holster. Now, a holster must mean he has his famous crossbow. That's uh, his main weapon of choice. And this is the holstered version, which does fit in the holster, which is really, really cool. Now, being an SH Figure Arts release, with all this articulation, you need some hands. And the basic set of hands you get are a couple posing hands with a couple of his trademark hand poses, which is pretty neat and a couple hands for his uh, crossbow, which is pretty neat because it is able to hold the crossbow. But you get other hands. As this guy is a next that has fire abilities, you get fire hands. Now they are blue and green uh, mixed color translucentness, but they are actually hands are specifically sculpted for each piece and can be removed from inside the fire if you want another pose, which is really, really, really cool. Now, he can fly with his fire, which is pretty neat, but these here are kind of more attacking fireballs, uh, just kind of looking more menacing, kind of like a fireball at the ready to load his crossbow, um, not really so much an attack one. 
and that's why you get much larger ones that are full on fire. He can plug his hand in here, his wrist joint just plugs in, and now he's got this huge fireball that he's ready to just throw at someone. It's really, really cool how well these effects work. And I love that you get two different sized fire effects for him. Because that does give you a lot of posing options. And that's really, really neat. Now, if you don't want something so over the top as a fireball in his hand, you can go for the more subtle route of his crossbow. Now, while you could hold his crossbow all folded up like this, it's much better when it's all splayed out and loaded with a fire arrow ready to shoot someone. And that looks really good. But there is one thing missing, as we know. When Lunatic uses his firepower, his eyes ignite on fire as well. And in order to replicate that, we have an alternate head. So let's pop this head off and swap in his fire head. Now, the head joint does get a little tricky to detach because of all the joints. And as you can see, things keep falling off as he is an older figure. Um, his wrist joints sometimes cause the hands to actually pop out of socket, which is a shame, but overall the effect is achieved nicely. Now when he's got these heavy effects on him, he's really just kind of toppling himself over. So in order to accommodate for that, you get a Tamashi stage packed in with Lunatic in his real name. Spoilers. Anyways, he attaches nice here, and now you've got some options. But that is not all that Lunatic comes with. If we remove his fireball, because it's a little big for what we're going to do here, swap in a more relaxed hand, pop him off the stand, we have another option for posing, and that is his Wicked Cape. It appears here in two separate parts and forms around his body just like that. And all you gotta do is just clip this together, and now you have Creepy Lunatic in his creepy cloak, where you're not really sure what he's doing with his hands. Now, this highly restricts his articulation. It's pretty much all you can do is move legs and arms and nothing else because of the cape. But, that is why we have an alternate front to this piece. And that would be this one, which has room for his arm to extend so that he can be actually functional to some extent replicating poses of him standing in front of red moons and firing an arrow from his crossbow which can be done a lot more gracefully when you're not trying to review a figure on camera but that coupled with this tamashi stage which in this form can really only just hold him up lunatic comes with a lot of accessories and i mean like a lot of accessories because Dang, that's a lot of stuff for one figure. So overall, SH figure it's a lunatic is a quite fantastic figure. If you're one of those people that considers the quality of a figure art based on how many accessories he comes with, he's really great as he comes with a lot. I loved how the Tiger and Bunny figure arts came with their own personalized Tomashi stages that were packed in with the figure. That was a neat little inclusion that I really liked. And Lunatic is a great figure. He's probably my favorite of the Tiger and Bunny figure arts overall, even if I am missing about five of them. But this is the only thing from Tiger and Bunny that I currently have scheduled to review. I might cover the other figure arts later, but for now, Lunatic is the first and currently only Tiger and Bunny review I have planned, at least of what I'm going to tell you. But I can recommend him if you are a fan of the show. He is one of the more expensive retail release Tiger Money figure arts, as I believe he only had one or two production runs, unlike Wild Tiger, which had like four production runs and then like six variations coming out. Lunatic was just released a couple times, and he's definitely worth it if you can find a good price for him. He's got a lot of accessories and a lot of character, and even if some parts fall off occasionally, like the belt pieces, that's more so my fault for possibly not taking care of the figure as well as I should have and it also being three years old. But, hey, it's a cool figure nonetheless. So be sure to stay tuned for next week's videos here on Soundout 12. As always, Monday is Model Kit Monday. Soundout's Toy Chest has a new episode every Thursday, and there's a new Soundout review on Saturday. So be sure to check out those new videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday here on Soundout 12. And...
and be sure to check out HeroTaga.com. But if there's any Tiger and Bunny news, I'll definitely report on it personally. I would like for another movie, please. I'm not necessarily needing another serious Sunrise, but another movie would be really cool just to kind of have a movie trilogy. I think that would be pretty neat. Anyways, talk to Sansei. Goodbye.